Hi, my name is Justin Schelp and I'm the founder and run our engineering team here at Patch My PC. In this video, we're going to review some of the new features that we've implemented within our publishing service in the last three months. So uh, we've had quite a few releases, probably about 20 or so. If we look at our download and docs page, you can see that we do post all our release notes uh, within this website where you can see all of them here. We figured it might be helpful to have a quick consolidation video to just cover all the new features that we've implemented within the past three months based on your feedback. So we can see probably within the last three months, we've had about 20 different releases addressing different customer uh, ideas. So uh, just a quick uh, overview of how we get feedback, uh, just in case you haven't used our user voice yet. If you go to ideas.patchmypc.com, this is where you can view all the feature requests as well as seeing like which ones we've shipped for our publishing service. If you wanna add different filters, you can see what's trending. And of course you can add new feature requests. Now, once we mark a feature from our ideas portal that we're gonna implement it, it does go over to our roadmap at patchmypc.com forward slash roadmap. So you can essentially see all these different features that we've shipped within the past three months. And this is gonna be the quick overview showing all these different features and what they are based on that feedback you gave us. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. So if we go to our publishing service, kind of the small one here is that if you click the escape key, it will no longer close the application without a uh, saving setting. So escape key now does nothing if you're anywhere within our publishing service UI. Now uh, within our publishing service, if you generate a cert, we now have the ability to configure a custom subject name rather than the default one that we used to have of patch my PC service. So if you wanted to make it something like Contozo's WSUS certificate, you can now have any name that you want based on what works best for your environment. Jumping over to our update rules, we've got quite a few features here to talk about. Uh, one of the biggest ones, if we look at our SCCM database query that will scan all the applications that you have installed that we support in our catalog, one of the big improvements that we did here is we can automatically run the scan before any synchronization occurs within the publishing tool. And based on results, you can say, if there's any new products that Patch My PC has added in their catalog, automatically enable them based on them being installed on a specific number of devices that you can configure within your environment. Now you can also automatically enable those new products with custom right-click options for the updates or application publishing for that new product that's being enabled. So pretty cool option here. Uh, this will make it so you really don't have to come into our publishing service very often, not even for new products because we can automatically enable them based on your existing environment Okay, so jumping back into our products here, there's a few things that we've added for updates and applications. So these right-click options are applicable to either the updates or the applications. So if we come over here and look at Chrome, uh, just to show you some of the new options, let's right-click and go to our pre and post update scripts. So some of the improvements that we've added uh, for our pre and post update scripts is that you can now include custom files. So if we look here, we can include additional files within an update or an application package. So for example, if you had a pre-script that you wanted to reference like an INI file or some arbitrary file, you can include any file that you want within the uh, application or update. One other thing that we can do is we can now include any custom folder. This was one of our most recent updates. Uh, we had some customers that wanted to use PS App Deploy Toolkit, but it required some subfolders and the additional files would not work in that scenario. So now you can also include any custom folders into the application or update content to automatically be added with your pre or post script. Uh, this option here to run your pre-script before any process check, this one is also new as well if you want to have your pre-script run regardless of whether you have the auto kill or skip option enabled for updates or apps. So coming back over here, if we go ahead and right click, uh, one of the new options that we have for our uh, logging, so this is where we can automatically create logs for the vendors, EXE, and MSI installers, we have this secondary option now that if we detect an application or update installation failed, meaning that you got a non-zero exit code, you can copy it to a secondary location only on a failure. So if you want to have all your failed logs go to like a UNC path, you can now have that uh, configured uh, for that specific scenario. Another option that we have, we have this new feature called Patch My PC Define Scripts. So we'll automatically opt you into some scripts that help enhance the installation experience. 
So the only products that we're using this for today is Java, but essentially we'll have a pre-update script that we've created for you that will automatically remove all previous versions prior to installing the latest to ensure that you have only a single up-to-date version installed for Java runtime. So since Java doesn't automatically remove old versions by default, we have this new option as a right-click menu and you can see if there's any patch my PC defined scripts that will do any customizations to help improve the installation. Okay, so jumping over to applications, this is a big one now. So just first thing to mention that we ship our new base installation feature to now use the application model in SCCM rather than legacy package like we initially had it done. So this shipped in July. So now anything that you enable as an application within the application rules that's been renamed will actually create using the application model in SCCM rather than packages. So that's a huge improvement and all the new application features that we're talking about have shipped since the initial July release of the application feature. So first thing, if we go ahead and look at the options, we've got quite a few options here that we've added recently. Um, first one is that if you do not want to allow an application to be installed from a task sequence, so that checkbox within the application, you can uncheck this option now if you don't want to give that ability to install from a task sequence. Another option is that you can uh, exclude the version name within the application title. So if you're using products like UI++, or MDT UDI where you make associations for imaging based on an app name and you don't want that to change, you can exclude the version from automatically being added. And one of the most requested features we had was the ability to automatically move applications to a custom folder within SCCM whenever they're created or updated by our service. So we can see that we have a custom folder and we can see that that corresponds to a folder that exists within our SCCM console. And that's where applications would automatically be created in or move to whenever they're updated from our service. So uh, we'll go ahead and look at some of the other options here. If we look at the option here, if you have your applications update automatically in place, you do have the ability to delay the application from updating now between one and 14 days from when we initially released that application update if you want it to be kind of validated and go through more testing instead of just automatically updating it if you have one of these uh, first two options enabled for the auto update behavior. Okay, so we'll cancel out the options. That's kind of the new options for around app management. Now we do have some new right click options for our applications as well that we've released. You can uh, now set the max runtime. So you can set the min and max runtime of an application as well as automatically add the process names within the deployment types install behavior option within SCCM. One additional option that I don't think we've looked at yet is for the auto enable feature based on scanning, you can also exclude any application or update product if you don't want it to be enabled automatically. So uh, that's pretty much uh, it for the applications. Jumping over to our sync schedule, for the monthly sync, you can now offset it by a specific number of days. So for example, if you want it to always happen one day after the second Tuesday, you can now offset it just like you can in ADRs within SCCM. If we go ahead and look at our emails, it's not something that we're going to see directly within the email page here, but all the updates and applications that have been updated within a sync that automatically gets emailed will now be in alphabetical order uh, for the email notification. Jumping over to the advanced tab, if we run the modify published updates wizard, there's quite a few enhancements here as well. Uh, first one is that we will now display all of the updates that are visible in the current filter view. We can also see if we select any, you can see the selected count as well. Uh, another new option here is that if you click on an update, you can also show the applicability uh, rules within the update itself to see what's the installable logic and what's the install logic. So you can see all of those options now directly in the modify updates wizard. A few other options here in the advanced tab, you can now automatically check whether a uh, update uh, installer is in the local content folder if you want to check that before ever attempting a download. So maybe you have some firewall filters and you want to download a specific uh, update installer file and put it in a folder to check for because the server can't access it. You have the ability to always check the local content folder first. And then we have the ability now to automatically create a backup uh, and place it on a, a remote or local path whenever a setting has been changed. And you can also now export and import all the settings within the UI here for our publishing service 
uh, to an XML file. So you can export and import that if you were moving servers or something like that. So that's gonna cover uh, pretty much all the new features that we've uh, implemented in the past few months. Of course, there's plenty of bug fixes and improvements on the back end here, um, but that's gonna be the uh, overview of the features that we've implemented in the last three months. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.